In preparation for our first attempt at performing turns around a point, we're going to take a few minutes to discuss the key elements of the maneuver. As with all other maneuvers, turns around a point has three main elements that the pilot needs to concentrate on. Directional control, altitude control, and airspeed control. The goal of this maneuver is to fly two constant radius circles around a selected reference point on the ground, correcting for wind drift. Keep in mind that your maximum bank should not exceed 45 degrees. If you find yourself needing more than that, you are too close to your reference and should widen your circle out. Similar to the other ground reference maneuvers, the airplane's ground speed will constantly be changing as it transitions between tailwinds, crosswinds, and headwinds. These different relative winds will require a constantly changing angle of bank as well as various amounts of crabbing to maintain that constant radius. When flying on the downwind heading, your ground speed will be the greatest. This part of the circle will require the steepest angle of bank and the fastest rate of turn. When flying on the upwind heading, your ground speed will be the least. This part of the circle will require the shallowest angle of bank and the slowest rate of turn. You can therefore see that to maintain this constant radius, the airplane's bank and rate of turn will gradually but continuously change in proportion to the ground speed. To enter the maneuver, fly on a downwind heading towards the right side of your reference at the distance you wish your radius to be. Approaching a beam your reference, roll in the initial bank rapidly enough so the bank is reached a beam the point. Remember that the downwind is where the steepest bank occurs, so your initial bank should also be your steepest bank. Gradually and continuously decrease your bank as you slowly transition into a headwind. As you continue the turn towards the downwind side, the wind will be transitioning from a tailwind to a crosswind. You will have to progressively turn the nose of the airplane towards your reference point as you turn into the wind. This will prevent the airplane from being blown away from your reference point. As the airplane is faced into the wind, your bank should be at its shallowest, since this is the point at which your ground speed will be at its slowest. On the upwind half of the turn, the nose of the airplane should be pointing away from your point and into the wind to keep the airplane from being blown back towards your reference point. As the airplane is turned back into the wind, the bank angle must be gradually and consistently increased to compensate for the increasing ground speed. Continue to do so until you finally end up a beam your point on the downwind in your steepest bank angle just as you were at the beginning of the maneuver. You may find wind correction easier to handle if you plan ahead. Note the distance you are from your reference. Then, find a landmark at that same distance, 90 degrees ahead in the circle. Watch for any drift as you attempt to fly over that next landmark. Adjust your bank as necessary. Pick a new reference every 90 degrees. Throughout the maneuver, it is important that you divide your attention both inside and outside the airplane in order to maintain a constant altitude. Using a combination of the horizon, wingtips, and instruments will help you keep your original altitude as you complete turns around a point. The primary flight instrument you will be using to control the pitch is the attitude indicator. Since the bank varies throughout the maneuver, the back pressure on the yoke will have to be increased when flying downwind, where you use the greatest bank, and decreased when flying upwind, where you use the shallowest bank. Back up the attitude indicator with your altimeter and VSI to maintain your altitude. If you lose or gain altitude, make the appropriate pitch and power adjustments, but do not change the bank angle from what is required to complete the maneuver satisfactorily. While performing turns around a point, it is important that you maintain a constant indicated airspeed. This will allow you to better anticipate the changes in your ground speed as the airplane transitions between tailwinds, headwinds, and crosswinds. As the bank angle changes throughout the turn, the amount of induced drag will also change. This change in drag could potentially cause small changes to the airplane's indicated airspeed. Monitor your power settings throughout the maneuver and make small adjustments as necessary to keep your airspeed constant. To perform turns around a point, you must first determine the wind direction. Use visual references such as smoke, lakes, flags, or even a wind drift circle in order to accurately determine where the wind is coming from. Once you know the wind direction, you can begin to set up for the maneuver. 
As with all maneuvers, perform clearing turns and make a position report on the appropriate practice area frequency. In order to fly turns around a point, you will need a ground reference point. Select a reference point that is easily identifiable from all sides and small enough that you can easily identify your radius of turn. Be sure that you select an area in which an emergency landing can be made if necessary. Establish and maintain 100 knots indicated airspeed and enter the maneuver on a downwind to one side of the selected point. You must enter close enough that when you lower the wing to begin the turn, the wing will not block your view of the point. Once you begin the turn on the downwind, remember that your ground speed will be at its fastest. As the airplane passes a beam your point, begin your turn by rolling at a fairly high rate to your steepest bank. This bank angle should be less than 45 degrees in normal conditions. Gradually decrease your bank angle to your shallowest bank as the ground speed decreases through the first half of the turn. Additionally, crab towards your reference to prevent you from drifting away from your point. As you begin the upwind portion of the maneuver, gradually increase your bank angle so that you end up in your steepest bank at the same point at which you began the maneuver. Additionally, remember to crab away from your reference this time, as to not drift towards your point. Perform two complete turns around your point and exit on your entry heading at the same altitude and airspeed at which you began. Once you have exited the maneuver, set cruise power, retrim the airplane, and complete the cruise checklist. Now that we've covered how to fly the maneuver, let's look at the end goals for your skills in turns around a point. Some of the standards for the end of course check ride include select a suitable reference area that includes an emergency landing site within gliding distance in case of an engine failure. Plan the maneuver so that you enter between 600 and 1000 feet AGL on the downwind and at an appropriate distance from your reference point. Apply wind drift correction to track a constant radius turn around the selected reference point. Divide attention between airplane control and the ground track while maintaining coordinated flight. Maintain your altitude plus or minus 100 feet and airspeed plus or minus 10 knots.